Oh, now don't get scared. <laughs> We're going to talk about a couple formulas here. Um, we know that um, I've talked before about how capacitors let through AC but block DC, and inductors uh, let through DC but they block AC. Okay, so what does blocking mean? Well, blocking means it adds some resistance, right? There's some resistance to doing that. And so we're going to call uh, X uh, the resistor, okay? So what does it mean to, to have an, a, a resistance, okay? So if, if your capacitor, ignore everything else, just this is one over capacitance. Um, if you have a very small capacitor, it won't let through um, AC. If you have a very large capacitor, then it's easier for the for the AC to go through. So, um, so as the capacitor gets bigger and bigger and bigger, then this equation gets smaller and smaller and smaller, which means the resistance goes down, right? So bigger capacitors means lower resistance, and bigger inductors mean bigger resistance. Okay, now. There are resist things called resistors, and we've seen resistors. Um, capacitors that act like resistors or inductors that act like resistors, that's going to be kind of confusing. If I say resistor, you don't know whether I'm talking about a resistor or capacitor or inductor. So they call these reactances, okay? So this is capacitive reactance and this is inductive reactance, okay? So sometimes they use the letter X with a little seed, it means it's a, it's, it's a resistor due to a capacitor, and this is a resistor due to an inductor. Okay, so reactance is what we're talking about here. So um, reactance is a function of the size of the capacitor, and then certain frequencies are easier and certain frequencies are harder, right? So as the frequency goes up and up and up, okay, then the uh, resistance goes down. And here, as the frequency goes up and up and up, the resistance also goes up. So it's harder for high frequencies to go through inductors, and it's easier uh, for low frequencies to go through the capacitors, right? So um, let's, let's ignore inductors for now. We'll just do the capacitor one, okay? And that's because I'm going to do an experiment. It's easier for me to do experiments with capacitors. So. Okay, so here's here's an equation, 2 pi. There's a 2 pi in there for various reasons. Um, there's a whole bunch of mathematics behind these equations and stuff that have a bunch of trigonometric trigonometric values. And these trigonometry values of sines and cosines and stuff just kind of get confusing. And there's 2 pi's in there because of the trigonometric functions need those 2 pi's and stuff. But for now, it's just, just kind of, it's there. It's just the equation. It's 2 pi. 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance, okay? So let's do an example. We're going to say we have 27 megahertz. It sounds like a CB radio. 27 megahertz, and we have a capacitor of 118 picofarads. Okay. So what type of reactance do we have? What type of resistance is that equal to? Okay. And so if I had a calculator here, um, okay. So we're going to do uh, two pi times. Frequency, 27 megahertz times uh, 118 picofarads, okay, minus 12 or picos, times, and then 1 over that. So it's 49.95 ohms. Well, that sounds like 50 ohms. So the reactance is equal to 49.95 ohms, okay? And reactance is in units of ohms. Okay, so the reactance, capacitive reactance for this capacitor at 27 megahertz is 49.95 ohms. Well, that's interesting. So how could we measure that? Well, we could measure that with a, um, an LCR meter. That's what LCR meters do. They measure L's and C's and R's. I did a video about that. I'll try to remember to link it down below. Uh, by looking at phase shifts of inductors, Eli the Iceman type stuff, um, you can actually work out the inductance and capacitance depending on phase shifts, whether the phase shift is before or after, and how much the phase shift is. And there's a bunch of equations that allow you to calculate things like this, right? So phase shifts. Um, so we're talking about uh, two numbers, amplitude and phase, amplitude and phase, okay? 
And a lot of you are going to own um, vector network analyzers these days because they're so darn cheap. Okay, the nano VNAs. Vector network analyzer. Vector. What is a vector? Well, it's magnitude and phase. So a vector network analyzer can measure capacitors, okay? Because it knows its magnitude and it knows its phase, it knows its frequency, and it can do these equations and stuff. And um, yeah, so let's go over the vector network analyzer and see if we can't uh, kind of look at a circuit. Let's look, let's look at a particular circuit. Um, I'm going to have a circuit where the, the uh, network analyzer Okay, this is channel one. Channel one is going to be cut over here, and it's going to go through a capacitor. Okay. Then it's going to go through a resistor. Then it's going to go to ground. Okay, and I'm going to choose a 50 ohm resistor. Okay, and I'm going to choose some capacitor. Okay. And let's go ahead and see if we can put 118 picofarads here. So if we have channel 1 going into 118 picofarads, and then we have a 50 ohms, well, we have uh, 50 ohms of resistance, okay? And we have 50 ohms of reactance, okay? Um, so Let's see if the Vector Network Analyzer can give us those two numbers. Alright, so I've hooked up the circuit over here. Uh, you can't see it, but it's, it's that resistor and capacitor. And we are going to look at, uh, what was it, 27 megahertz. So we'll go here to CW. We'll say we have 27 megahertz, and it will measure one point. And it will measure the point right there on the Smith chart, okay? Um, so, uh, the nano VNA will do the same thing, but if you take a look at the measurements, it will give you the um, the uh, values here. It'll say that we have uh, 40, 49, about 49 ohms of uh, resistance, and we have about 50 ohms of reactance. Now, uh, Smith charts kind of break up capacitors and inductors. They make capacitors negative and they make inductors positive, and we'll see that in the in the equation here in a second. But um, if we have negative uh, reactance, then it's a capacitor. If we have positive reactance, then it's an inductor. So we have negative reactance minus 50 ohms and 50 ohms. So we have 50 ohms of normal resistance and we have 50 ohms of reactance, okay? And uh, they're here on the same plot. And we can read that on the plot, actually, also. We come out here to 50, okay? So this is 250, 100, 50, 25, 10. These are real numbers. These are the resistances, right? So we come over here to 50 ohms. And then reactants are these numbers over here. So we have 250, 150, 25, 10. I showed that once again on a different video. But we come here to 50. So we have 50 and we have minus 50, and they intersect right at this point. Here's the 50 curve, and here's the minus 50 curve, okay? And they plot right there at a single point, okay? It's also smart enough to then say, ah, I can do the math, and it says you must have a 117 picofarad capacitor, right? And so uh, it does the math for you. It measures it, it looks at that phase difference, it looks at magnitude and phase, and then it does a bunch, bunch of ha. Huh. It looks at magnitude and phase, and then it does a bunch of those equations, and boom, out comes these numbers. Okay, and uh, they're very very easy to to view on the uh, on the chart here. Okay, we have uh, 50 along that curve, minus 50 along this curve. There we are, right in the middle. Now, if we change. Remember the formula? It's 1 over 2 pi frequency times capacitance. So if we change the frequency, it'll move. Or if we change the capacitance, it'll move, okay? So let's change the frequency. Let's change the frequency to um, 14 megahertz, okay? And woo, now we're over here, okay? Now we're at 48 ohms, so the real part didn't change, but the reactance part changed. The resistance cha stayed the same, but the reactance changed. It went to 100 ohms, okay? So we went, to we went from 50 resistance, 50 reactance, 
to 50 resistance, 100 reactants, we have 50 and minus 100. So that's the capacitor. All right. If we increase the uh, uh, inductance or the uh, the frequency, uh, let's say we go to 44 megahertz. Okay. 44 megahertz is up here. Maybe 47 megahertz is a little better. Yeah, we're getting very, very close to this line now. So now we have 49 ohms resistance and 25 ohms of reactants. Okay, resistance and reactance. And now we're on the minus 25 line, okay? What if we wanna see this all at the same time? We wanna see the 14, the 27, and the 47. Well, we can do a sweep, right? So we will say we wanna start at 27 megahertz and we wanna stop at 47 megahertz. And uh, let's see here, start. 20, oh, we wanted to start at 14, 14 megahertz. There we go. Okay. And so that's what it's doing is it's just sending a frequency and measuring it and then moving over a little farther, sending a frequency and measuring it, moving over a little farther, sending a measurement, moving over a little farther. Well, how many times does it do that? Well, when you calibrate your VNA, remember you have a, the number of points, it's either 101 points or 201 points or whatever. Those are all the points of calibration. And so it takes all of these points going from, going from that frequency to that frequency and splits it all up, right? And then it plots them all together. And so you see this curve, okay? So you see that the uh, resistance does not change, but the reactance does change between those frequencies, right? Now, remember I said that if you changed frequency, it would modify it, or if you change capacitance, it would modify it. So over here, I have a variable capacitor. So let's go back to CW. Let's go back to our 27 megahertz. So now we're here at 5050, the, the coordinate 50 minus 50. And then let me change the capacitance, okay? And I'm gonna change the capacitor. And we can move in the same direction. We can move in that direction or we can move in this direction. If I kind of wiggle it, kind of wiggle it back and forth, you can see that we're, that we're following the same line. So if we change frequency, it moves along that line or we change capacitance, it moves along that line, okay? So we have 27 megahertz and we want it to be minus 50. So I'm gonna, I'm going to touch the little capacitor here and dial it in so we get a nice, we get a, we get a nice 50. There's 49. Yeah, 49 and a half. That's close enough. Okay. So, so I'm kind of, if you've noticed my videos, I'm kind of sneaking in. Um, I don't want to do one video on Smith charts because I will lose every single viewer, <laughs> unless you already know Smith charts. Uh, they're very complicated and I'm trying to ease you into it. I'm trying to get you the ideas of what Smith charts are doing. Now we have resistances and we have reactances. Okay. Resistances and reactances. What if we have both at the same time? Well, that's what we have here. We have both at the same time. Well, we need another word for that. What is it, What does it mean to have um, uh, boys and girls? Okay. Boys and girls are the same type of thing, right? They're humans, right? We have people, right? People, boys and girls are people, right? So we have one word for boys and we have one word for girls and we have one word for people. Well, here we have resistance, reactance, and impedance. Impedance just means both together, okay? So it's like people, right? So reactance, resistance, impedance. So this is an impedance chart telling us the impedance, right? Because it's giving us both res resistance and reactance on the same plot. It's plotting impedance, right? So um, one of the reasons the Smith charts are weird in their buildup is to be able to do things like this. Um, there is another axis in the Smith chart that's actually X and Y. And we'll eventually get there in some video. I'll tell you what X and Y really are. But Smith, the, Mr. Smith, who invented this chart, knew that those units didn't mean anything in his head. They were very difficult to use in his head. Um, 
And so he liked different units. And so what he did was he took this XY plot and he overlaid it with these circles. And that allowed him to visualize what's going on. Because he knew that if you say uh, start at zero and stop at 100, that he knew that uh, these curves could tell you by a glance what was going on. Oh, we're traveling the line of constant resistance, right? The impedance, the impedance is changing and the reactance is changing, but the resistance is not changing, right? You can just see that from the chart. And what do we have here, right? Well, we have a fixed resistor, we have a fixed capacitor, but we're changing the frequency. And so as we change frequency, we're traveling along this line. So it was a way for him to visualize things. Um, and it, it helps out for a lot of other things too. And that's why, that's why I like the Smith chart. That's why a lot of other people like the Smith chart. Just other ways of looking at this data. You could look at log magnitude and say, you know, what does that mean? Did that, does that tell you much? Does that really tell you what's going on here? You could say uh, polar. Uh, well, it's the same curve. And it's telling me angle, but it, it's not really giving me much information, right? I, I kind of don't know what's going on here. So, so he came up with this idea of a Smith chart and it allows you to visualize things. Sometimes you travel along these curves. Sometimes you travel along these curves. Sometimes you travel in straight lines. Sometimes you travel in, 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 in loop-de-loops. Um, and it's, it's a nice way to visualize certain things. But I, I, hope, I hope this helps a little bit with this um, uh, frequency center 27. Um, oops, 27 megahertz, there we go. So this idea of a resistance and a reactance, you can read them on the chart. It'll tell you what's going on. It says at 27 megahertz, we have 48 ohms of resistance. We have minus 49 ohms of reactance. And that would be the equivalent of a 118 picofarad capacitor, right? And we've seen the math that, that shows us that's, that's particularly true. All right, I wanna show you one more thing before we go today. And that's the idea of omega. What does omega mean? All right, so this is a circuit we looked at. We looked at um, 50 plus 50. It's actually on the um, Smith diagram, it ends up being 50 minus 50. Okay, so 50 resistance, 50 reactance, and we use the letter J, a little J. And that's a mathematical trick um, that allows you to do trigonometry without having to do trigonometry. You know, maybe someday we'll learn about that, but just for now, learn that it's, a, it's a two different numbers, resistance and reactance. This is now impedance because it's, it's now people. It's both, it's, it's both boys and girls, it's people. So this is impedance. And um, let's introduce something called omega. Now people are used to omega looking like this, right? This is the, res the resistor symbol, right? That's an omega. Well, that's a capital omega, but a lowercase omega looks like this, okay? It kind of looks like the back end of somebody. Anyway, um, this is capital omega. This is lowercase omega. Mine kind of look like W's, all right? So we're gonna introduce omega and we're gonna say omega is just two pi F. Remember these equations up here? They're just too, they're just, they take too long to write. And so, you know, most engineers are lazy. All the engineers I know are lazy. <laughs> and so they just use omegas to mean two pi F. And so the reactance of a capacitor is one over omega C, and that's just the reactance of an inductor is omega L. Okay, so one over omega C, omega L, a done. And because we want to keep them separate, let's make this one negative, so we know it's a, a capacitor, and make this one positive, we know it is a, uh, we know it's an inductor. So that's what the Smith chart does. Um, and like I said, it then says that the, uh, the impedance I'm gonna use the letter I, which is incorrect, but we'll say impedance is just uh, some type of resistor plus some type of reactance times the imaginary number J, which don't worry about it for now, just it's a coordinate. 
it's a it's a it's a just two different numbers and we're going to plot them as a coordinate this is one coordinate point this is the other coordinate point resistance reactance impedance 